Behold, now she follows the Lamb who was crucified for us. Powerful in virginity, modesty, her offering, a sacrifice on the altar of chastity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us each year with the feast day of your handmaid, Saint Cecilia, Grant, we pray, that what has been devoutly handed down concerning her may offer us examples to imitate and proclaim the wonders worked in his servants by Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Daniel. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came and laid siege to Jerusalem. The Lord handed over to him Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and some of the vessels of the temple of God. He carried them off to the land of Shinar and placed the vessels in the temple treasury of his God. The king told Ashpenaz, his chief chamberlain, to bring in some of the children of Israel of royal blood and of nobility, young men without any defect, handsome, intelligent, and wise, quick to learn and prudent in judgment, such as could take their place in the king's palace. They were to be taught the language and literature of the Chaldeans. After three years of training, they were to enter the king's service. The king allotted them a daily portion of food and wine from the royal table. Among these were men of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. But Daniel was resolved not to defile himself with the king's food or wine, so he begged the chief chamberlain to spare him this defilement. Though God had given Daniel the favor and sympathy of the chief chamberlain, he nevertheless said to Daniel, I am afraid of my lord, the king. It is he who allotted your food and drink. If he sees that you look wretched by comparison with the other young men of your age, you will endanger my life with the king. Then Daniel said to the steward whom the chief chamberlain had put in charge of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servants for ten days. Give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then see how we look in comparison with the other young men who eat from the royal table and treat your servants according to what you see. He acceded to this request and tested them for ten days. After ten days, he looked healthier and better fed than any of the young men who ate from the royal table. So the steward continued to take away the food and wine they were to receive and gave them vegetables. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and proficiency in all literature and science, and to Daniel the understanding of all visions and dreams. At the end of the time the king had specified for their preparation, the chief chamberlain brought them before Nebuchadnezzar. When the king had spoken with all of them, none was found equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and so they entered the king's service. In any question of wisdom or prudence which the king put to them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his <coughs> kingdom. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. 
glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise Stay awake, for you do not know when the Son of Man will come. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus looked up and saw some wealthy people putting their offerings into the treasury, and he noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins. He said, I tell you truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest. For those others have all made offerings from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has offered all her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Cecilia, a virgin and martyr, but also somebody who's attributed to be, to be the patroness of music and of musicians. And there's nothing much uh, that was said or can be found about the story of St. Cecilia and how she became a martyr. Um, it was just said that sometime in the 5th century there was a big cult in Italy that happened around her and that uh, there was a basilica that was specially established for her, and therefore we can truly say that there was a lot of followers that kind of gave themselves under the patronage of St. Cecilia. The only story that we can think of about her is that she was once, as a Christian, she was once engaged to a Roman, a Roman nobleman, uh, who by her, through her convincing, uh, became Christian. The, the Roman be, uh, converted to becoming a Christian. And he suffered martyrdom because he became, he converted to Christianity. Of course, uh, she herself also experienced that in her own life. Uh, but truly, this is like, her life was very mysterious. Like there are no written records, so we cannot find anything at all that speaks about St. Cecilia, except the fact that there was a lot of following in the early uh, centuries of the church. But she is always depicted as somebody who carries either a viola or a small, or somebody who's uh, sits by a small organ, and that's why she's called to be the one to be the patroness of music. And it's perhaps probably because of that, through that, that we can probably reflect more about how St. Cecilia can become a gift to each one of us. Because as patroness of music, she kind of reminds me, and which also came up in the second reading for the Liturgy of the Hours today, how, uh, in this famous saying by St. Augustine, or attributed to St. Augustine, says that he or she who sings prays twice. And I don't think St. Augustine really just means that if you burst out into tunes and just started singing that you're actually praying twice. There's actually something behind that particular statement that St. Augustine says. And I think he was referring to uh, certain depths of prayer that one can attain that can be compared to somebody who likes to sing or to somebody who bursts into singing. And I, at first, I didn't kind of understand what St. Augustine was trying to say about this, but when he tried to explain it, I kinda, it kind of reminded me of my own uh, grandmother. My grandmother is somebody who just likes to burst into singing whenever she thinks like she's alone in the house. You know, and when I lived with her, you know, sometimes I would hear her sing and I would just kind of stay in the shadow and just watch her while she's singing. 
And she actually, and she really like, she, she bursts into singing when she's very happy, when she's feeling joyful uh, interiorly. And so she would just be singing and she would just burst into all of these old songs that were, you know, that used to be in, that used to be played on the radio before I was born. Um, and then, you know, she would just sit down and just kind of continue to sing. But then suddenly she, it would just change. Like she would stop saying the lyrics. She would stop saying the words and she would just start to hum. You know, she would just be humming the tune of those music. But what I can see about it is that it's not because she forgot or she forgets the lyrics or she doesn't know the words anymore. It's just that she's just humming because it's now what's going on inside that's coming out of her, being expressed in music, being expressed in a tune. The joy, I can feel the joy that comes out as she's humming. And now it's the joy that's speaking, that's singing for her, that's coming out of her mouth to reflect what's going on interiorly. And when I, was, when I was reminded of that image, that kind of helped me to realize what St. Augustine says. Because a lot of the saints would tell us that there are certain levels of prayer. That vocal prayer, where we pray with words, is not just the, the only type of prayer that we can learn. But there's a deeper kind of prayer. Even something that St. Paul would say where you go into the depths of your heart and now it's the Holy Spirit that grows within you. That you don't even have to say words with this kind of prayer, but now the Holy Spirit speaks for you, and all you have to do is to just groan. And now it's the Holy Spirit that's that's bringing your intentions, your prayer, up to God. And I think that for all of the saints, for most of the saints, they say that this is a deeper kind of prayer, where truly it's not anymore about you saying things, but that the Holy Spirit speaks on your behalf. And now all you have to do is just you just groan because. That's the Holy Spirit that's speaking directly to the Father on behalf of you. And I think that this is what St. Augustine refers to, like singing. When we have this kind of prayer, it's like a deeper, a double kind of prayer, not just the vocal prayer that we speak. And I think St. Cecilia can help us with that. Because as we learn this analogy of music, then we can also learn to, to desire this deeper kind of prayer in our lives. Where truly, what we truly have in our hearts can be brought up to God because it is now the Holy Spirit that prays for us. So we pray that St. Cecilia will continue to inspire us with this particular type of prayer so that truly it is what's going on, not just what we think we need to bring to God, but truly what's interiorly that can be brought up to God in that deeper spiritual conversation that connects us directly. Stand. Let us bring our petitions to the Lord, knowing that His power is at work in our lives. For missionaries in the church, may God sustain and uphold them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from addiction, that the Lord will free, free them from their bondage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young people of our community, that God may lead them to discern his purpose for their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us offer our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear these prayers of your people and answer them according to your mercy and goodwill. Through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings you bring in celebration of Blessed Cecilia win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Cecilia, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister <coughs> to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Shelton our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my life, but only say the word of my soul shall be To those joining us from social media, please pray with me an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you to my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. O God, who bestowed on blessed Cecilia a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant we pray through the power of the sacrament that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known, that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left and aided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. You, I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition. In thy mercy, hear and answer. 